So hello, it's Adair Palmer here and I'm with you again for Community TV with Adair. I am on mytimetv.live and it is an absolute pleasure to bring you this very, very special broadcast today. First, a bit about my uh, Community TV with Adair. It is TV for you by TV from me, where I talk to people in the community who are doing things that amazing things to help enhance and add that value to the lives of people around them. Now, this could be anything from meditation, a yoga class, tarot reading, gardening, cooking, whatever it is you're interested in, we'll be covering it here. So today it is my absolute pleasure to, like I said, introduce Mary McLeod. She is an earth angel. I love it. She's a sing singer and songwriter. I have been um, had the pleasure of actually attending uh, her, uh, I guess, little sor sor I can't even pronounce. I'll have to bring her on and say she can tell me what they are. Well, the little private gatherings where we have the benefit of hearing some of her beautiful songs that she's written and sings. She is also a joy spreader who works for the divine beings whose highest pur purpose is to be in service to others through this time of conscious evolution of change. I will actually bring her on. There's more to introduce, but I'm sure Mary is more like I would love to ask her questions about what she does and how she does it. So I'll just pop this little thing off the screen here and bring lovely Mary McLeod on. If you are here and stay to the end, we'll be doing a draw for an event that Mary is, <laughs> there we go, event that Mary is holding on the 10th of February. Mary, welcome. Hi. Hey. How are you? I've got, I, I'm good. I've actually, I've got, I forgot to mention, I have done a frame. I don't know if you can see it from where you're sitting, but I've actually done a frame. People in the uh, viewing the broadcast can see it. I've got some flowers on this side, on that side, and right across your face, it's got it's all about community. So, <laughs> so I'll turn the frame off. You can have a look at that afterwards. I would just like to say, if you're watching the show, if you're here with us, I've got see we've got some hearts and some reactions already. Please give us as much current encouragement as you can because uh, we love to know that you're here, that you're watching, that you're appreciating what we're bringing to you. Just give us a shout out from, uh, you know, to say hi and where you're from because we often get people from right across the world. But uh, I've uh, focused mainly on letting people know in Adelaide that we're on live today. So, Mary. Cool. Yay. <sighs> can I just say, can I just say yay for the community outreach because it's really what, Conscious evolution is all about is community connecting with each other, right? Yeah. Understanding that we're all one and we need to connect back together in order to, um, you know, step into a more joyful way of living and, and more connected. And, you know, when you're connected with other people, you don't have things like depression so much and, you know, the loneliness that goes along with that, feeling that we have to do it all ourselves. So bravo to you. Oh, I could not agree more. And I think it is bravo to, um, I guess, to, for me to, for getting over myself and actually doing this because it would have been totally terrifying if I someone know. had said to me just over a year ago, maybe 18 months ago, if they said that I'd be hosting a TV show on Facebook and I would be going live multiple times a week talking to different people, I would have cacked myself. I would have. I went. know. I know the feeling. I know. Which it's awesome. Is, I'm so glad that you did that. Well, and I think people like you, like um, we, this with the conscious evolution, we people are put in our way to help us along the path. And I think it all started, you know, actually thinking back when we were planning the Law of Attraction River Cruise. And you were going to sing for us and I was going to MC. When I said that, I could feel this fear gripping my heart. It's like squeezed. I can't believe I said I would MC for a live event. That was, that was probably the very first thing 
that sort of led me to step out. So, um, and now, and oh my God, you're speaking directly to my passion, which is exactly, you know, it's my passion to help people like you and people who are kind of halfway out of their shell to come fully out, to have the, the courage and to um, be willing to be seen and heard. That's my absolute passion. That's what yeah. I stand for. And I, I think that why, uh, why we're talking is so, it is so meaningful because there are so many people out there with this gorgeous message inside them and mm. they're just too scared to speak. Mm, I know. I well, I've been there. I'm I'm still, I still get there sometimes. I'm still, like, terrified and I go, can, I can't do this. I can't do it. And then I get up and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So and that's what makes you one of those people who is actually doing it because you were willing to step out of your comfort zone and just go, I don't care if I die here, i got to be me. <laughs> and if you don't mind me sharing a little bit, I've sort of, with your, um, with your coming out, with your songs and that, it's, you've, you've been totally transparent and totally honest with us about how, how it's been for you and how, you know, like sharing the emotional journey as well. Hey, Theone's here. Hi, Hi Theone. She's on her lunch break. Great to see mm -hmm. you here. Um, so I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I will. Hi, Jane. <laughs> and Jane, hello, Jane. How are you going? To see, there we go. Is Jane an Adelaidean? Do you know, you know Jane? She's giving hello. Must be nice up there. So I just, yeah, so with your journey, because I know the absolute fear that I felt going to to do this sort of thing and pushing myself way outside of my comfort zone, but I didn't I didn't have the balls or the, <laughs> the, the confidence to share that and be vulnerable with other people. So I think, and Jane's saying, uh, she's, she's saying hi and she's saying she's doing great. And you're from Cairns. What's it like up there, Jane? Yay. So that's what I truly appreciate about you, Mary, is that you were able to, to, to be vulnerable and to share that vulnerability to give Look, people have, like me drink. Mm, well, because I had a really deep fear of being seen, of speaking up, even in one-on-one -on -one relationships when I was growing up, you know, someone would ask me a question like, what do you want for lunch? And I would like, I would freeze. I'd look at the ground. I'd be all embarrassed. You know, I had a real um, chokehold on my ability to speak my truth or to speak up at all. And that translated down the road into um, not being able to speak in public, running out of the room when I, when I was actually, um, I actually decided I needed to get over my fear of public speaking because I had this seed inside of me that really, but I had a message that I wanted to bring, even if I doubted it 99% of the time. That 1% of the time made me go and do a public speaking course, and I've done lots of them since then, but even at my first Toastmasters um, uh, group, I stood up just to introduce myself to say my name, and I burst into tears. Oh. And that, that was only five, six years ago. So that, yeah. I mean, that's how how far I've come out of my shell since then, but I have still been stuck in, in lots of degrees in the last five years. And it's really, and even the process of now being um, able to be, be willing to be interviewed, um, to be able to run live events, it still is way out of my comfort zone, but I know that now I'm on earth angel duty. Yes, you owe it. You owe it. <laughs> and I have, I mean, the more I step out, the more I get these divine messages that just need to come through me for the people I'm meant to serve. So who am I to stop that happening? Absolutely. No way. I'm Any more than you can shut your mouth now that you started. You know, you can't stop now you started. You've got to keep going. I, I would love to know if people watching, uh, we have a few here, so uh, for... Uh, if you're watching and you'd like to share, you know, your most terrifying moment and how you got over it, if you want to share anything, we'd love to hear it because it's it's about having a conversation with you as well as between Mary and myself. 
really because this is the whole point of what I'm doing and what Mary's doing is so that we can we can connect together and we can share we can we can be vulnerable and it doesn't like you said nobody's going to die and and at the only saying yes you can now also jump on a live with a nanosecond notice mm -hmm. and Jane Jane is giving us hearts and that's I love that and we get that that total support that total acceptance about wherever we're at what we're doing is absolutely absolutely fine so I, I was just when you were talking about Toastmasters and um, the reason why I asked if people would want to share their experience because I remember that one of the biggest growth points for me and it wasn't even about speaking live it was about doing something momentous and that one thing was I applied to go to university and I was a wrinkly. You know what they call the wrinkly? The mature age student. I was 26. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was old. <laughs> and so I applied to go to uni and I remember getting accepted and I pulled up into the car park at the, the campus that no longer exists, it's at Salisbury, and I was sitting there and my heart was pounding and my hands were clammy and I'm... I'm tears pouring down I'm getting all emotional thinking about it now because it was one of those things that I was absolutely I was in sheer terror and my my legs felt like they were wood and I had to actually get out of the car walk into the auditorium I'm reliving it now it's quite amazing that feeling I walk into the auditorium and all I had to do was go up to a desk say my name and register for the courses that I've been accepted to that's how and I was terrified yeah. absolutely terrified and it was oh man I was so close I was that close to turning the car back on and just driving back to my little hole in Hamley Bridge like and be where it was safe mm -hmm. to my mm -hmm. miserable life <laughs> with you know and I just wanted to go back there that's all and yeah I, I just that was that was a defining moment for me when I actually I I felt like I was going to throw up and my like when I was walking across there, and mm -hmm. it didn't stop. Jane, thank you for sharing. Jane saying my most scared moment was when I took my son backpacking around Thailand before he started high school. Oh my God, that is adventurous! <laughs> wow. So I guess what, what's the scariest thing? What was the scariest thing for you, Mary, about speaking? Mm. Um, okay, here we go. So I was doing those public speaking classes because I really wanted to start a meetup group. And mm -hmm. I was shit scared. I was so scared to start, to start a meetup group. So I got brave enough because I, I did a tapping course, right? And I started using EFT on myself to get through some of that fear. And I started my first meetup group. And I had um, 24 people sign up to my, my first gathering. And do you think that I could eat for like three days before that? Oh, my God. I couldn't eat. I, I was just on the toilet every five seconds. I was so nervous. But I was like, even if I die, I don't care because I'm meant to run groups. And I can't stand it another second repressing myself. And that was similar to an experience at one of my public public speaking classes when I was I ran out of the room I was it was one of my things it was my turn to speak and I'd run out of the room and this time I found myself sitting in a toilet cubicle just crying my eyes out going fuck it I can't do it yeah I'm just gonna yeah. go sit there. and something rose up inside of me and went what you know if you don't give yourself a voice then your your life is not worth living and mm -hmm. I, I still get choked up when I say those words because they're so true. If you don't give yourself a, a, a voice and express the divinity that's trying like how to get through you to express yeah. itself in the world and you don't give it that voice or that platform, you are going to suffer. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm so passionate. I, I've started a group for people to start being seen. So that's a, um, the group called I Am Seen in 2018. And oh, it's just the link. We need okay. to put the link to the group. Um, okay, I'll... so that's a group that anyone can join and um, do you want me to do that now or should we just concentrate? We'll do it, we'll do it afterwards. Just remember yeah. we can put the link to the group in the uh, comments above here and afterwards and you can uh, yeah. and people can jump in and join. But I just wanted to say 
Jane hadn't travelled alone in a long time but wanted to put herself outside her comfort zone. I think that's an awesome thing to to do and um, and I can understand, like I said, with the university thing, that was way outside my comfort zone. I actually went on to do several more degrees, including a master's. Um, each time it was terrifying but not as terrifying. Yeah. So, and then Jane saying the best thing ever. I, I think that is, that's amazing when you can do that because the, the real joy does come, doesn't it, when you when you realise that you can do this stuff. I know. And, and, it and, just takes uh, taking the step. It just takes taking the um the action step, and then yes. once you do it, then you realize, oh shit, I could have done this all along. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> so, so I still I still actually found through my uni days, especially with the undergraduate degree, that was um, going into tutorials, which was public speaking, and we'd go, sit in a circle and we'd have to go around just like you in Toastmasters. All I had to do was say my name and the course I was doing. And, and I would be, again, I would get all choked up. I'd go, oh, for God's sake, you know your name. You know the course you're doing. And, but I could always remember the, the blood pumping through my, you know, and my ears just feeling like bang, like this banging in my head because I was just so terrified. It was yeah. just my heart pounding. And I just had to say my name in the course that I was doing. And it's, the only thing public speaking was what's my biggest fear as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, a lot of people's biggest fear is public speaking. And, you know, yeah. some people say that actually public speaking is um, more of a fear than death, right? Yes, but yes. You well, know what? I say, realize most that people would rather give the eulogy, no, be in the coffin than give the eulogy. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is that I've realized that public speaking fear is a fear of death. Oh, tell me more. So you're afraid of speaking because all the attention is going to be on you. Everyone's going to know that you're an idiot, that you're stupid, that, you know, you don't deserve to be there. You don't even des deserve to live. And everyone's going to reject you. Everyone's going to abandon you. And then you're going to be alone and then you're going to die. Oh, what? That's, you know what? <laughs> I think you've summed it up beautifully. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and uh, the, only, the only saying now my biggest fear is snakes and I can't. Spiders. Oh, was it spiders? Okay. Okay. Hey, hey Roy. Roy's here. Hello, Roy. He's Roy's. He's actually multitasking there. He, where is he? No, that's I, I clicked the wrong one. It's great inside. It is actually. Uh, and I want to unpack that a little bit more. We could talk forever about this, but we will have a chance at your workshop. Roy, I just want to shout out to Roy from the Net Friending Movement. He's here, but he's also on his own show, being on two shows at once. <laughs> Roy is the voice of the Net Friending move, Movement, and April Roger is the, um, uh, she actually does the, the, the meet and greet uh, in, uh, in person. Well, Roy's there in person, but... Uh, Thank you, Roy, for joining us. And just take take our love with you across to the other. I joined, did hop on Roy's show, uh, the Net Friending show, um, a little bit earlier and I just popped in and said hi and then I've had to jump off to come over here. So um, now did I say, yes, great insight with the, uh, now how did you put it? You went, you went, we get up there, people are going to judge us, we feel. Yeah, because you're, because you're, Everything that you're afraid of, you're afraid other people are going to see you as stupid, ugly, yes. fat, not worthy, um, an idiot, you know, worthless. And if that happens, then you fear them all abandoning you. And then yes. you're going to be alone and then you're going to die. Yeah. That's right. So, yeah. So <laughs> it's that it's the fear, the primal fear. Like when we're born, we have a primal fear of being abandoned. Yeah. Because yeah. Of our lives are so that's what I've come to the conclusion of. It's the same fear of death, fear of public speaking. Blah, right. blah. Death is a part of life. We might as well get used to it, right? So like public it. speaking is a part of life now. Get used to it. And Speak. I think you've got to be, you, you know, show up. And, and I think the, the biggest thing, the absolute biggest thing is having the, the support and the encouragement. And I know you and I have done some work together, which I truly value because... <laughs> um, <laughs> What's this? True that, Peony. Some have said Roy is just one of the girls. <laughs> he is. Okay. Um, so, so I just, 
I just want to say, to express my appreciation for the work that you do and how you do it, because in this, we'll have talk a little bit about the uh, the event that you're running on the 10th of February, because I think this is something that is really going to help. You said you've got some new processes that you, you're going to be using to help people get, can I say get over themselves? I know that sounds harsh when someone I've, says. I've said that, I've said that in the description of the event. It's yeah. how to just get over because we're all pretty much over our our issues our problems our baggage blah 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 we're like I'm, I'm really over that let me just let it go and that's what this event is all about and so so how do you see um that like in terms of what we're doing can you is there a little can you give us a little sneak peek about some of the things that will be yeah sure i'll just um what is in the way of us showing up right um, letting ourselves be seen. We've got a whole lot of deep-seated fears, what I call mindset blocks, um, or actually more accurately, they're mindset protections. So they're yeah. they're not really blocks. Blocks don't actually exist. It's just that you've coated yourself in a whole lot of armor from your life experience. Your ego has created this, this suit of armor around you. And um, they show up in, I like to categorize these mindset blocks into four areas. So one of the main ones is body shame and self-consciousness. So that's one of the biggest ones that people don't want to be seen because, you know, let's let's talk about nearly every woman and I'd say three quarters of men don't feel like their body is good enough or is up to scratch or, or would be acceptable for other people to see, which is total malarkey, isn't it? I <laughs> you know? malarkey. <laughs> I'm malarkey. So the mindset blocks involved with that are... Um, are you know just getting over that feeling that this body is isn't a divine vessel that is just like the most miraculous thing. If you had no body, you'd have no vessel for the divine spirit that's coming through you every day. You know, uh -huh. it's getting over all the the blocks around being seen and heard in your body. For one, mm -hmm. what were you going to say? Can I just can I just make a comment to that because it, it dawned on me since I've been doing this work with you, Mary, uh, that. Uh, I'd spent most of my life, I'm now mid-50s, but I'd spent most of my life wishing I was in someone else's body. How stupid's that? Well, <laughs> and yeah. was like, yourself, don't be mean to yourself about it either. But, it's not, what, but I didn't actually consciously know that. Yeah, exactly. I, I was that exactly was the not, same. Yeah. Body shame was my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> I was That's addicted to body shame. I would pass a mirror and go, God, you're fat and ugly. That's what I would say to myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, half, half of my life, I would, you know, I had that sort of self-talk going on. Yeah, and I love that. Um, I love that. I was just gonna. I'm getting on a little bit of a rampage because how do you think God feels like about that? You know, the, how do you think the divine source would feel about that? You know, um, of course they love us no matter what. But if we're if we're looking at that, the, the divine vessel in the mirror, going, oh God, this is so not acceptable. Blah blah blah. It's it's pretty sad for the source that created it. <laughs> it's almost yeah, like we created it. It's like we've been handed a gift and we just slap it out of their hand. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. can I just say, would we all be willing? This is sort of a part of a process. Would we all be willing to understand? And I'm going to get teary because I get teary every time the divine wants to speak through me. So would we all be willing to accept the fact that this is a divine vessel that you're living in? That this is a miracle that this body is serving you, giving you wisdom every single day, every single moment. It's giving you wisdom. It's giving you messages. It's trying to help you understand what your next step needs to be. It's trying to give you the courage. It's representing what you're doing on a mental and emotional level. And you need to tap into this divine body because it is, it is there for you. Yeah. So would we all be willing to be open to doing that? Yes, and we have some hearts. Let's yes. have some. We're stopping. Yes, 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 Roy. We're going to stop that yes. shit that we tell ourselves in the mirror. Yes. And I, I did a, a, the 14 day body love challenge not long ago where every single day we were getting in the I mirror saying, I love you, me. I love you, me. And I love, I love this body. And this body is so amazing. I love my curves. And, you know, it's amazing that the body can actually store up all this energy in the form of extra cells because fat is a dirty word right <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> it needs to be 
the body is like that amazing that it can store up extra nutrition for a time when you need it. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. So yes. I'm talking to you right here. I, I, I was in on. that group to do that 14 day challenge. I did the first week and then we nicked off to Queensland. So I did, I missed the last one, but I absolutely loved it. And as challenging as it was to make a commitment to yourself to do the simple exercises, they sound simple, but just looking in the mirror every day and saying, um, saying, I love you, me, that that's that can be hugely challenging for, you know, at, when you first, because we're not taught to do that. So yeah. the great value. Well, we're, here you know, we're here to get over it, so you just do it. You don't think about it. You don't go, yeah, I don't feel right about this. Isn't it? You just go do it. I had some fun with that. I decided I wasn't just going to do it. I was going to have fun with it. And I absolutely, um, there we go. I love it what Jane's saying. Yeah. yeah. The mirror work was great and insightful. No fat, just voluptuous. It's just <laughs> it's just perfect as it is. And I think that's something. So, I mean, this is like you were saying, this is just probably one aspect of the thing, Roy, my God, these gems are coming out. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The way you treat, see yourself is the way you treat yourself. Your stuff mm -hmm. is so valuable, Mary. It really and, yeah. is. And going into, into that and the way you treat yourself is the way other people are going to treat you. So that kind mm -hmm. of the next set of mindset blocks or mindset protection, which is around relationships. So yeah. how much we repress ourselves, we repress our voice, we don't speak our truth because of um, we're afraid we're afraid that our partner or someone in a relationship is going to reject us or it's yeah. going to cause problems, it's going to cause conflict, someone might get angry, and we want to avoid all that. So we completely repress our own divine voice, and there's yeah. a whole lot of mindset blocks in there within relationships. Yeah. And then the, the, go on. Go on. Yeah, no, you go on. Go. I was, was going to, uh, yeah, it is a vicious circle, Roy. Um, and the the next section of mindset blocks, which you might not think would be um, related to allowing yourself to be visible, but it totally is, is blocks around money and abundance. Yes, totally. If you have blocks around money and abundance, then, and you know that being seen is going to bring you a whole lot of cash, right? As soon as you're willing to be seen and be heard and express what your divine talents are and your messages, that is going to automatically, because you're working for the divine, that's automatically going to be increasing your divine cash flow. And that is going to bring up mindset blocks around money. So anything that you believe around money is dirty, um, rich people are um, thieves, or um, I don't want to, I don't want other people to be envious of me. You know, anything that's deep seated in your subconscious around money, or being seen as really abundant and um, and whatever, is going to come up. So that's the third section. <laughs> We got a lot of we got a lot of mindset stuff that we're actually going to cover in the event on the tenth of February, um, with this new process that I've come up with. Um, oh, and just they got into some emojis, but I'm not quite sure what they are. They look like little squares from here. But Jane, I'm we... sure. <laughs> Sorry, I did. That's all right. Let's just assume that they're hearts. <laughs> and I, I'm and happy. We... Roy posted something having Mary on net friending. I would love to. Love Roy, to. yes, yes. You could, um, that, yes, Mary, you would add a huge value to, to that show. So the this is the net, we're part of the net friending movement. Fiona and I are part of it as well. And uh, and we will, I'll, I'll connect you guys with, um, with Roy and April because this is how the movement starts. We just, you know, we just start where we're at. We connect people. We go, well, I think you might have something in common with that person and then we grow together and we no connections are accidental. So we are very out of time. Well, are we? We, oh, can we, can we do, um, Okay, we'll do. I think we'll plan another one of these so where we can continue the conversation. And sure, um, definitely, I would love to be able to share the process of being seen with someone because you can even do that online. Oh, where you, really? You, yeah, okay. where someone. Well, I'm happy to. St we can stay a few more minutes. Um, 
as Rob's saying, we just swap. Roy's saying, we just swap guests. We're all interchangeable. Let's do, um, okay, so just explain. I want to give away a, a double pass for people in Adelaide to your event on the 10th of February. But people yeah. must. So can we, if people need to go, because the show's normally half an hour, can we can we do that? If people want to say yes, comment yes below, and we'll give you a number, and then we will um, then we'll choose a winner to get a free double pass to the event. Do you just want to? While we set this up, do you just want to sh share a little bit about the event, uh, yeah. where it is? And, uh, and also that you've got some the other special that you've got happening and then we'll go into this other process. Okay, no problem. So the event is on the 10th of February. It's a full day transformational workshop, play shop, where <laughs> I'm gonna be sharing this process of being seen. So we're gonna be doing partner work, group work, and then full group work, um, all allowing you to be seen and to be um, acknowledged and validated and healed if you allow it, if you're really, really ready to allow yourself to be seen and heard in the world, to step up um, to helping more people or even to believing in that you have a possibility of helping people in some way, shape or form if you don't already do that. But you just need the courage to be able to be seen on Facebook Lives, on stages, you know, in any, in your relationships even, to be seen in your abundance, then this is a day that's going to transform all the mindset blocks that we've kind of um, covered today around your body and your body self-consciousness. You're freaking over that, right? So we'll just nip that and you can walk out like a free woman, free man, because um, this is for everybody. The relationship blocks, those things that just keep going round and round and round in circles and you can't seem to get out of it, we're going to show you a pathway to get through that. The money blocks like Chances are, if you have body self-consciousness, body shame, you have relationship problems, generally speaking, you've got challenges with abundance because this is a conglomeration of stuff that goes together because you have a deeper purpose that is going to come through you once this other stuff is solved. So this is, um, you got to go, Jane. Bye, Jane. And uh, also leading into... Um, designing a, your future self and your, your life vision for yourself. So covering all of those sections throughout the day. And it's fun, like my middle name is fun. I love, I mean, I wouldn't bother running an event if it wasn't gonna be really fun because having fun in your life is the most powerful thing you can do to actually manifest your dreams and your desires and to be all yeah. that you are because you know what? The, your, div, your divine self is fun as hell. So it's at the um, it's at the Damien on Fisher function room, function center um, in Fullerton. What else do I need to tell you guys? We've got um, at the moment, I was thinking for today, um, normally you can get a double pass for 97 or a single entry for 67. But I'm thinking for anyone who's watching here, you can have a double pass for 67. Okay, yeah? so that that is... <laughs> That is a really, really good offer. What I'm seeing is that we've got people from um, right across the world hooked in here, and um, it does. It looks like we don't have huge amounts from Adelaide. She only said yes. She wants to go to the door, and now she's saying that she actually she's got the cocktail party on the 10th of February, so she won't be yeah. um, won't be able to. So what we can do is, how about we? Because I we I want to continue the conversation. Um, we can do it online up as well. I've got an online boot camp that's going to do the same thing for an eight-week boot camp coming up at the end of Fab because that's online. So next time maybe we could give that away or feel free to do that yeah. this time. If you, if you get to right. that. So 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 we can we can work that out um, and maybe just let people know afterwards uh, what's what's happening with that. So do you do you have uh, do you want to have time to take us through the process? Ah, oh, through a process. Um, if one, okay, so is there someone out there listening who has got an issue, who's feeling in a place that they really need to transform something, somebody who's in pain, someone who's willing to be vulnerable right now and be seen, because that's the power. The power is being vulnerable and being seen. That's the process. Is there someone so, out 
willing to who wants help now so we can so if you can just type uh, me if you want to uh, mary were you thinking that we would bring them into the show yeah because we can't okay. really do it without we can't really be seeing without being or, seen. Okay. That, was, Actually, <laughs> that, was, that was like okay <laughs> Uh, I'll have to laugh at the blonde moment. <laughs> you know, if possible, if you can't bring them in, Adair, I can, I can still try and tap into them and look into the camera so they can look into my eyes. They so they, if they could um, just type in what the problem is. I, type can, in I, can, I, can get, I can get the guest link to people, but I think there seems um, uh, we've had people had to leave, but there seems to be no one putting up their head. So what we can do is maybe plan this for next time. We'll definitely do it again. Tell me one. You can tell me one. Tell me something that you're, you know, a problem that you have, and I will. We can do it next okay. time. But I'm wanting to oh, do no, it now. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to okay. do that. Okay. So Any sort of, anything that's bothering you, okay. anything that is feeling like you just want to break through, is there oh, something well, that's not? Let's go with the abundance one. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. So, so the abundance, abundance the, the lack of abundance, abundance makes you feel like or not being where you want to be at with your abundance. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I'm actually failing at what I want to do, what I want, want to achieve. Okay. Feel that feeling of failure. And I'm looking in the camera, I'm not looking at your face because I want you to see in my eyes that feeling of failure. And I can tap into whatever's left of my own feeling of failure in, in order to make this process even more powerful. And anyone who's watching who didn't want to put their hand up and you still and you want to experience this because we all have feelings of failure. And you know what's going to happen if you fail. You're, you're going to look like, you know, other people are going to go, oh, yeah. She didn't really make it. it. wasn't really. She didn't really have what it took. Yeah, you're feeling it. So now you're being vulnerable, right? Right here and now, you're feeling that feeling of failure, that feeling of like shit. shit. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? That said, it feels like shit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let let yourself feel like shit, and look into my eyes. The dare. Beautiful, beautiful child of God. I see you. I feel you. And I know you. And what I'm being guided to say is that failure, that feeling of failure, is a divine feeling. It means there's something that is so successful within you that it scares the crap out of you to think about it. So it's easier to feel like a failure than it is to remember your own divinity, your own power, and who you really are. So just take a deep breath. Let it all out. And Adair, are you, are you now willing? Are you willing? to see yourself as the divine sees you, to see yourself in all that beauty and power and grace, all that potential just waiting for you to allow it to erupt into this world that needs you so much. Are you willing to see your failure as your road to success? Yeah, yes. Yeah. He's taking a deep breath and accept that. Ah, oh, failure is my road to success. Whoa. Awesome. I needed that too. Failure is your road to success. Whoa. That was Whoa. that's just a little sneak peek. <laughs> oh, that's that's awesome. I mean, just uh, that whole switching the feeling about how I felt about it mm. because I can still the this yeah the situation is still the same but I'm feeling I like 
okay with it. And it was like when we did the, the body. Yeah, yeah, you've moved up. You've moved your vibration. I can and feel it. Yeah, I can feel it. I got shivers all over me. And if you keep on practicing, even practice that mantra, failure is my road to success. Oh, yeah. shit, yeah. Fail faster. <laughs> Fail more. <laughs> the more I fail, the closer I am to success. Woo! <laughs> oh my God, that is awesome. I think that's absolutely that's gorgeous. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I just we will wind it up. We've gone over time, but I think I, I would love to encourage uh, people to come and um, and experience this for themselves. So if you're watching the replay, stay in touch. Send us a message on um, on mytimetv.live and just say Mary because then we'll know that you want to be caught. Uh, we'll let you know when Mary is on. Just hit the message button and and we'll let you know when Mary's on again because we're planning another one uh, either early next week or later this week. We just haven't got some dates and times yet, but I think this this is good. Put the group in the comments, the group that's um, I am seen in 2018, because that's where everyone's hopping on Facebook Live and just getting over themselves. Yes, yes. So send a, send me the link. I'll get, I'll grab the link and I'll put it in the comments above. You can pop it in the comments below. Okay. And we will together, and uh, like it's not just you and me, but together collectively, we're just going to we'll raise everybody as far as we possibly can this year. I think that's... I get excited when I think about that. Yeah, so, I know. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Okay. We will we'll see you uh, again Thanks soon. Everybody. Thank you, Mary. Bye. Wow, wow, wow. What an awesome show. Mary is amazing. I just so, I can't wait to have her back on mytimetv.live, community TV with Adair. Uh, we'll be doing that next week. So please remember if you want to be notified that we're going live, please just pop your, send us a message on the uh, page here, click on message, just type Mary, and I'll make sure that you get notified that she's live. You can jump in, we'll part in, participate. She can do some processes with you. Powerful, powerful stuff. It's Adair Palmer. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.